What's up gamers? Today we're going to be talking about the Hover app again, this time taking a little look into the algorithm and why it makes no sense, as well as digging in a little bit more on one of my concerns I made in the last video, the current user population on the app. This video was sparked from a tweet I made comparing a video I posted to TikTok and Hover and the engagement it received on both platforms. Let's play a game! The same 13 second video posted to TikTok and Hover, analytics below, but guess the number of Hover views. So on TikTok, I had 100% watch time, a 13% like ratio, and 365,000 views. On Hover, we don't know watch time, but we had a 23% like ratio, 5% GGs. So let's watch the video first. Hold on, Luigi. I don't trust those stairs. They look like they're up to something. I'm so tired of your stupid jokes, Mario. I tried to tell you, you stupid cut. To get out of the way, the answer to the question was 39 views. It's 40 now with an extra like, so it, now it's a 25% like ratio. With almost a double like ratio on Hover than on TikTok, it only received 40 views. Now I understand that Hover is a much, much smaller platform in comparison. I obviously was not expecting hundreds of thousands of views on a platform without 100,000 users, or at least I don't think it has that yet. However, I was expecting my best performing video on another platform, which is a short 13 seconds, to at least perform decent on the Hover platform, especially considering that 25% of views resulted in a like. Come on, give me at least 100 views. Hover has even said multiple times that the algorithm is based on watch time percentage and amount of engagement it receives, although Hover doesn't allow you to see the watch time percentage yet. But that's how all these algorithms should work but that like ratio is higher than I see on other platforms. One in four views gets a like, that's a really high positive engagement rate. That noob guy asked a great question on my original tweet asking, how does it compare to your size following an average viewership on both apps? What other variables did you take into account? Basically asking what other variables are out there that could affect low numbers as apples may not be apples. I love it. So we want to take a look at different platforms and show why the algorithm on Hover just doesn't make sense. Using math and logic. Wait, that's basically what an algorithm is after all, right? A set of rules to be used in calculations applied logically. Okay, so let's do that. Now, when considering TikTok, this specific video kind of makes it hard to figure out the exact information since when I posted this video, it caused a lot of activity into my previous catalog. Going back to the time I posted the first part in my Mario's Bad Dad Joke series. There are about 25 videos in total posted from part one to part seven of the dad joke videos. However, I know I was right around 1700 followers prior to making this post. When looking at videos prior to the first dad joke video, I averaged around 500 to 1000 per video, and I'm now at 5200 followers, and my videos are typically between two to 10,000 views, but I also frequently pop above 10,000 too. In total, I've made 14 videos across my dad joke and my Mario and Luigi proverb videos, both the same in terms of style, length, humor of the video, etc. They have 881,000 views in total, so averaging 63,000 views per video. Even taking out this outlier with 365,000 views, that would leave me with 13 videos at 516,000 views or just shy of 40,000 views per video four times as much as the high end of my average videos, but more realistically in the six to eight times range of my average videos on TikTok. Okay, so what about Hover? Out of 1,230 total views my channel had across 28 videos, my average view per video was 44 views. So this high performing video and high performing series of videos has performed average to all other videos I posted on Hover. I've posted part one through eight on Hover. My highest performing video on Hover overall has 119 views and my lowest has seven. But game night, you're posting Mario videos, which is a niche category that no one cares about. I'm so glad you brought that up. Let's talk about Mario, one of my favorite subjects. First of all, the fact that people think Mario is niche is absolutely ridiculous. The Mario franchise, when considering all mainline Super Mario games and spinoff series, is by far the best selling video game franchise of all time, around 775 million units sold. Even removing all spinoff series, Super Mario title games have sold about 390 million total units. In comparison, Tetris is next and has sold 495 million, Pokemon at just over 400, and Call of Duty right at 400 million. Think about those stats. The mainline Super Mario by itself has sold just under as much as Call of Duty and Pokemon. When including all spin-offs, Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, Mario RPG, all that stuff, it has sold almost as much as both of those series combined. 
Mario is widely believed to be the most iconic and recognizable video game character of all time worldwide. Pikachu would be another very highly ranked iconic video game character. There's also Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Link, Sonic, Laura Croft, Master Chief. There are plenty of iconic characters, but Mario and Pikachu are the two that stand far wide above all the rest. You show their picture to someone with access to digital media, good luck having someone not know who they are. But okay, we're looking at how many people watch this content. So to compare this fairly, I grab a popular Super Mario game, Super Mario Maker 2, as well as some popular categories I see, Just Chatting, Sea of Thieves, Call of Duty Warzone, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Rocket League, and then the newest Pokemon game, Legends Arceus. I went to both Twitch and Hover to compare their follower bases, and this is what I found. On Twitch, Mario Maker does have a smaller follower base than all games selected, except for the newest Pokemon game. Pokemon only has 10% of the following of Maker on Twitch. Sea of Thieves, Modern Warfare, and Rocket League have between 1.4 to 1.7 times as many followers as Mario Maker. Warzone has 7.8 times, and Just Chatting has 8.6 times. On Hover, however, every single game category has way more followers than Mario titles. This is crazy. Pokemon has 6.6 .6 times as many followers than Maker. Sea of Thieves at 22 times. Rocket League 31, Modern Warfare 46, Warzone 93, and just chatting a whopping 150 times as many followers as Maker. Now why is that? This goes directly back to the criticism that the vast majority of Hover users are streamers themselves. But how can you tell? I looked at Twitch at 1.30pm Eastern Standard Time on a Friday. This is how many streamers were in each category. Mario Maker 2 had 42, Sea of Thieves 540, Pokemon 690, Rock League 1290. For these next three, I stopped at 2000. I, I wasn't counting beyond it, but just chatting, like I literally could probably scroll forever and ever and ever. There are far less Mario streamers than streamers of the other categories. When you compare the amount of streamers to category followers, and I'm removing Warzone and just chatting because again, I'm not counting that high, but I'll just call Modern Warfare 2000. The streamer to viewer ratio is so much higher than the other games. Pokemon Arceus has a crazy low ratio of only 250 followers per streamer. Rocket League is about 2700, Sea of Thieves almost 5400, but then Mario Maker has an absolutely insane 50,000 category followers per one streamer ratio. So what this means is that there are a crazy amount of potential viewers out there compared to streamers for Mario. You would think then that there would be a ton of potential viewers for Mario content compared to the people producing it, which means that Mario videos should at least get a decent amount of views on Hover, right? Oh yeah, but there aren't followers for Mario on Hover because there aren't viewers, non-streamers, on Hover. To all the still skeptics out there, here is the real kicker for you. There is a highly correlated, direct relationship between the amount of people actively streaming on Twitch to a specific category to the number of Hover followers for that same category. For all you non-math nerds, a correlation coefficient measures how closely two sets of data match. The coefficient will be between negative one to plus one. Negative means it's directly negatively correlated, or that as one goes up, the other will go down. And one means that it's highly correlated, that they'll match. As one increases, the other one will also. Zero means there's no correlation at all, so the points have nothing to do with each other. Anything at a 0.75 or higher is considered to be a strong correlation between two sets of data. The correlation coefficient on the data I pulled is 0.93. To have something over 0.9 means the magnitude in which these two sets of data are correlated is just stupid strong. As I've said before, there is a severe lack of non-streamers on the Hover application, and this shows that mathematically. Okay, so whatever, I just showed you statistical evidence that there is an issue with the Hover user base, which is leading to there being a lack of regular Mario viewers on the platform. But guess what? That shouldn't even matter based on the recent update that Hover Xander released. Hover should now be pushing all games to viewers by default to help with these games being seen. Users now have to mute games they don't want to see. Based on everything else I've shown so far, I find it extremely hard to believe that a large population of Hover viewers would be outright blocking Mario content on Hover. Who has a problem with Mario? Let's get real. People will find Fortnite annoying. People don't like COD for gun violence, although we're talking about streamers here. 
I joke around all the time about Mario being the greatest mass murderer there is, but in seriousness, who doesn't like Mario? Hell, even Hover did a retro game challenge as one of their video submittal competitions. Out of 16 videos selected for the live show, half of them, eight, were Mario games. The winner was Super Mario 64. Obviously, people enjoy playing and watching Mario videos, but they aren't getting exposure on the platform. Okay, well, regardless of everything else I said, if I just made and posted videos to other categories outside of Mario that were more popular, that would solve my problems. Just have to submit to other categories. Wrong again! Those dad joke videos I was telling you about, after a couple didn't work in the Mario category, I started posting them to just chatting because it wasn't actually gameplay. I also have a series of Did You Know videos where I tell you weird facts about Mario games and put a twist or a joke in there, also into just chatting. These videos perform quite well on other platforms too, but still get the same metrics on Hover. I even posted several Rocket League clips, both gameplay and a funny short 10 second video on how to get good at Rocket League on there. And the same thing. In fact, my Mario videos seem to do better than the Rocket League ones. I really only have a couple points to come back to based on the data. One, the hover algorithm makes absolutely no sense. From my experience, it doesn't matter what category, length of video, time I post, amount of engagement I get, nothing changes the views I receive on my video. The second point is, there aren't any viewers, non-streamers, on the platform. These two points together support the argument I made in my last video, which is that this app will actually help with discoverability issues for streamers. You're posting content for other streamers to view, but good luck actually getting views even from them. In order to succeed long term, you need regular viewers engaging in your content, interested in watching your other content and watching you live. You won't succeed only having streamers watching you. Sure, this app could be good for networking, but I have concerns about networking on this app too. In my last video, I gave Hover a meh review, but said the streamers should still try it out. Honestly, my opinion has changed to where I would recommend the streamers don't even bother, at least at this time. There are some features of the app that are cool, but the app doesn't work in practice, and who knows if this app is ever going to come out of beta. At the end of the day, you can decide for yourself. If you're engaging in the community, having fun, feel it's genuine, and seeing growth, good for you, and go for it. I wish you all the luck in the world. I really do. I really hope that you succeed. To everyone else, I'd recommend putting focus into TikTok, and especially YouTube right now for shorts, as I explained in this video. If you have any questions at all, please drop a comment. You know you want to smash the like and subscribe buttons, so indulge yourself and do it! And until next time, happy gaming.